Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. For this month's Bird Notes program, we're going to talk about some of the birds people have been seeing so far this winter. Joining us from the Audubon Center in Huntington is bird expert and conservation biologist Mark Labar. Thank you so much for being with us today, Mark. Uh as always, great to be here, Fran. Yeah, it's wonderful. So um, this time we'll talk about winter birds, both regular and maybe not so regular. What do you got? Yeah, you know, the last time um, I saw everybody, um, we talked about uh, bird feeding and such. So I thought I'd kind of continue that theme as far as, you know, some of the birds that um, folks are seeing here in the state. Uh, you know, and they range from birds that are regular visitors um, to feeders. Um, for instance, um, this first image here is from uh, Ann Campbell over in Starksboro um, of a, you know, a purple finch and a mm. goldfinch. And, you know, these are, are birds that folks can expect to see. Some people are lucky to see both like Ann, um, especially when they're right next to each other. It's a stunning. Uh, yeah, it is. She's a she's a friend of mine and a great photographer. But then there's also uh, some of the eruptive species that people have been seeing. And by eruptive, meaning these are birds that we see in numbers in some years, but not necessarily in all years. And this is a pine grosbeak, um, a really um, startling bird. And startling isn't the word, but uh, you know, it's it's a very beautiful bird that fe folks have been seeing and. And often in this setting uh, on crab apple trees yeah. uh, and such where they're feeding on fruit. The color is amazing. And he's the color it, of the fruit. <laughs> it, yeah, they, it's, it really is striking. They're a great bird when you see them. So keep your eyes open if you're out in those crab trees and you never know what you might find. Um, the next bird is uh, a red pole. And this is a bird that um, you know, we see it our feeders. And again, when you see it, it often comes in, in large numbers. It will feed on thistle feed, uh, much like um, goldfinches will. Uh, Fran, you were mentioning something mm -hmm. about thistle before we started today and not seeing um, goldfinches at your feed. Yeah, as, as usually there are just tons of them, but not, not very many this year. Yeah, so folks should check the feed on that and uh, they may get, you know, goldfinches and red poles. Okay. And then again, when you're looking up in those crab apple trees or any trees that are sporting uh, some type of fruit, you might get lucky enough to see uh, bohemian waxwings. Mm. Now, this is a bird that is very similar to our cedar waxwing we often see. But uh, as you can see, it has those red, it's a little chunkier and has those red undertail coverts. Right. Uh, but oftentimes they'll be around and people have been seeing good numbers of them as well this year. Right, many many times they come in a whole flock. They're just stunning. And uh, of course, there, there are many birds that do come to the feeders. Yeah, and, and this is a bird from Helen Valley. She wrote me and asked me, you know, what bird is this that I'm seeing at the feeder? And interestingly enough, this is a young cowbird. It must be a girl. A brown, a brown headed cowbird, yeah, which, you know, as an adult is much darker, but this is probably a first year bird and, hmm. uh, you know, showed up at her feeder. So I, you know, at first was taken back, but was able to help her out with that one. And then of course, another common species we see at feeders um, are things like, you know, our blue jay, um, <laughs> which kind of gets a little bit of a bad rep reputation. Cause they eat all the seed or they're very yes, loud. Exactly. They, <laughs> They have a tendency to, when they come in, and you can see this feeder here is empty. Um, when they can get a perch, they have a tendency to uh, clean you out of your seed, especially if you have a number of jays visiting that. And they, they can force other birds away. But um, what's kind of cool is I got this image from uh, Nick Thornblade of Castleton. And he developed an interesting baffle system for his, uh, one of his platform feeders. Hmm. And he put these slats up, um, which allow the smaller birds to go in and get seed, but have thwarted his blue jays, which were um, kind of hoarding the whole thing up. So hmm. he came up with this kind of unique approach to 
keeping jays at bay and letting the other birds still get at the seed. Brilliant, and it's good looking. That's I love that. And yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So what else have people been saying? You sent in a, there are a lot of pictures today. Yeah, and you know, it's it's one of those things that this time of year we see a lot of things, and now with the snow on the ground, uh, folks might start to see um, things like barred mm. owls. This is a great shot from Gorgeous. Willem uh, Lenstra of Heinsberg. Um, sometimes they'll start coming in and in and around feeders to feed on the, uh, you know, the rodents that are feeding on the mm -hmm. seed at a bird feeder. So, you know, keep your eyes open just outside the range of your feeders and you might see a barred owl sitting out there uh, looking for a meal. And, you know, if you range a little bit further afield, uh, this is another picture from Ann Campbell. Um, you get down towards Addison and some of the open parts of the Champlain Valley, um, you might see a rough-legged hawk. Uh, and this is a visitor that comes down pretty regularly. And if, if you go to the spots where they are, like Dead Creek Wildlife Management Area, um, you can usually find these birds uh, perching up um, on telephone poles or in trees. And they come down and visit us this time of year and um, take advantage of, uh, again, the voles and other things they might find. Stunning. Now, this next one is kind of an interesting one because this is a bird that isn't seen regularly Vermont, in Vermont, even in the summer. So to see it in the winter, uh, this has been seen up in and around Chittenden County. This is a black vulture. So it, uh, you know, in the summer, we often get, and people regularly now see turkey vultures. Sure. Um, they're a pretty recent addition to Vermont as they've expanded their range north. Um, but the black vulture, which tends to be a southern bird, uh, you can see it has a, a short, stubby, wedge-shaped tail mm -hmm. um, and a black head, which is different than the turkey vulture. It looks like they may be doing the same thing as the turkey vultures. And folks have been seeing uh, three or four of them around the Chittenden county area in the winter time and we may be seeing as many of well maybe not as many but more of them in the future as they expand their range north oh that's exciting i look for those and then this yeah. next one you know ann sent me a bunch of pictures and so it, it touched on a lot of our things and this is not necessarily a bird a winter bird that you see but it has snow in its name so i thought <laughs> i would include this uh, this is a picture she sent of uh, snow geese down at, De again, Dead Creek Wildlife Management Area. You know, thanks to the state of Vermont and all they do down there to manage that large property for um, this species. Uh, this is a shot of them lifting off uh, by the thousands right. uh, when they come through in the, the fall and late fall. It's it's an it's an amazing sight, but I'm still I feel like I'm seeing more more birds again. Um, uh, even now, even though it seems like at the dead of winter. So, but uh, you have a couple of images from a little further afield. Yeah, and you know, it's funny, before I get to those, mm -hmm. folks have been commenting that they're not seeing as many birds as they have in the past and at their hmm. feeders. And a lot of that is due potentially to, you know, the lack of snow earlier in the year. But I think with the snow cover coming in, folks should be able to um, begin seeing more birds at their feeders. Um, or, you know, they might have a sharp shinned hawk hanging around and keeping their <laughs> birds away. Right. But uh, I got a couple of um, images, like I said, from further afield, and I thought I would just add them. Uh, you know, we have red tailed hawks here in the summertime, and this is a red tail uh, that's down in South Carolina, right on the coast. Mary Lowesby sent this to me. Hmm. And uh, it, it's nice to see an image without snow in it. Um, and so I thought I would include it to show that, you know, the birds we see in the summer are just kind of finding different places to go when things get a little bit tougher up here. Right. And then this next shot was sent in. Um, oh, and I think you have written down her yeah, name. Cheryl Twitchell. Cheryl Twitchell. And at first when I saw this, she, she said it was a relative from Austin, Austin, Texas that sent this. Hmm. And when I first saw this, saw this image, I'm thinking Texas. I'm thinking, you know, what strange birds might be there right along the border. And as I looked closer, of course, uh, it's an American robin in flight. 
Mm. It's a and, gorgeous picture. Uh, still really cool to see that uh, really red breast as it flies along and to know that our robins, even though some may still be here, um, mm -hmm. are doing well down south. Uh, even as far as Texas. Exactly. And and there are very showy birds right here in our backyards. Yeah, you know, I, I left these two. Um, these are from our own uh, Will Michael, who yeah. sent them in, the producer of the show. You know, the Cardinal, just um, by its nature and coming to feeders, and with its, uh, you know, the males having that stark color really provide uh, a lovely little um, show for us this time of year in winter. And that first picture was two males. And of course, this one uh, is in his backyard in Williston of two males and two females. Right, right through his window. That's very unusual to see two pairs, much less two males together, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, some people are lucky enough to have a, a number of males that will come in. And in talking to Will, he said sometimes they battle it out and they go back and forth. But this time of year, they're not necessarily as territorial. And if there's a food source that they can take advantage of, you know, they may put up with each other a little bit better than they would during the breeding season uh, when they're maintaining, um, you know, more of a breeding territory. Right. Uh, but always great to see those uh, colorful birds out there this time of year. Well, I love having all of these. These readers can send in more images to you, Mark, um, and, we, and we'll talk about them. I think these are amazing photos that you shared with us and that our audience shared with us. So if you're thinking you have a, a few photos or you have bird-related questions, you can pass them along to Mark at the address on your screen, or you can drop Mark an email. His address is mlabar at audubon.org. So um, we'll try to find uh, answers to your questions. Mark, again, thank you so much for being with us. I love the bird show and everything we talk about during these half hours. It, it's I mean, fun to talk about birds. I enjoy it too. 12 minutes. OK, see you later, Mark. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. Mm -hmm.